like most stuff on this channel is just self-learned. So um, you see, um, I can just tell you about my theories, why this doesn't work. And you can tell me in the comments if you know better why this is the case. Maybe I'm right with uh, what I'm saying. Good morning fellow mathematicians, welcome back to another video. So first things first, I'm terribly sorry if I sound a bit gay <laughs> because um, yeah, I caught a cold while flying back to Germany just a little bit. So I excuse for sounding a bit um, noseful of snot. With that out of the way, we're going to dive right in. This thing right here has been requested by one of my Patreon supporters. Thank you James Mark Wilson for supporting me on Patreon. Support the channel too, if you wish. Never mind. So this thing right here was a matter of try and error because this bad boy right here comes with a few problems in the process. But more about that in a minute. So my first immediate thought when I saw this was to introduce the complex exponential function of some sort. It does make sense actually. So follow my thought process here. So you know we can rewrite e to the i times x as nothing but cosine of x plus i times the sine of x. And you see this right here is nothing but a complex function of some sort. So what we can do, we can use some operators on that thing, namely the real part operator for example. So if we take the real part of e to the i times x, well this is going to correspond to the cosine of x. And we can make use of that because if we would just take the real part of e to the i times sine of x, well sine of x is our new x you could say, so just this argument right here, we would end up with the cosine of sine of x. And well, this was my first immediate thought and we can just plug it right in. So we end up with an integral from 0 to 2 times pi of e to the cosine of x and then the real part of this right here. So substituting this by this you could say. So the real part of e to the i times sine of x dx. And you see real numbers and complex numbers just form a Banach lattice. I read about this once while dealing with something like this. It's a really hard topic in mathematics and uh, proof theory and stuff like this. So what it only says this is a real operator and this is a real operator and in the Banach lattice we can just interchange real operators. So let's bring this real part to the outside and we can just take the real part of this whole integral you could say. So we end up with the real part of integral from 0 to 2 pi e to the cosine of x times e to the i times sine of x. Well, we can just use the exponential property to turn this into cosine of x plus i times the sine of x integrated with respect to x. Yeah, this is supposed to be an i. I'm sorry. And you see the cool thing is we now have this right here, this relationship just in the exponent. So let's rewrite this as the real part of an integral from 0 to 2 pi of e to the e to the i times x integrated with respect to x. And here come the real problems with this thing. You see, I was trying around while solving this and nearly every real method you could say I was using was just not working because, well, e to the i times x, you could say, we are walking on the unit circle of some sort. And the bad thing is, our interval of integration is from 0 to 2 times pi. And this is not good. Let me tell you this. So you see, if we take a... Um, first things first, I have taken real analysis class. It has been a long time ago, but I never took a complex analysis class. So everything I'm saying about complex analysis or stuff like this is just self-learned stuff. Like most stuff on this channel is just self-learned. So um, you see um, I can just tell you about my theories why this doesn't work and you can tell me in the comments if you know better why this is the case. Maybe I'm right with uh, what I'm saying. So you see we are kind of walking on the unit circle and if we take a definite integral from a to b of some f of x integrated with respect to x, we are going to end up with some kind of antiderivative 
evaluated at the point B minus antiderivative evaluated at the point A in this case. Okay, and here comes the problem. So you see, we are kind of integrating over a circle right here. And here's the point zero, you could say. So this right here corresponds to zero. And everything would be all right if you would integrate to something like this, some point here, or even closer, epsilon close to this thing. But the thing is we are integrating to the point 2 times pi, which is the same point as zero. So, so on the unit circle it just corresponds to the same thing right here. And there comes the problem. So you see, that mainly means that we would integrate to something like f of b minus f of b. And that would just result in zero. So, you see, if we would integrate a real substitution of that thing right here. So, for example, let z be equal to e to the i times x in this case. Well, if we differentiate that, then that would mean that dz is nothing but um, i times e to the i times x dx. But this thing right here is nothing but z. We can divide both sides by it. So we have dz over i times z being equal to dx. And here's just a real problem with this, because we have our upper and lower bounds. And well, for the lower bound, we would get just a 1 in this case. And for the upper bound, the case with 2 pi, we would just get our 1 once again. So we would integrate from a to a, and that would result in 0 by the fundamental theorem of calculus right here. This is not good. So. Um, in my opinion, it has something to do with the fact that this substitution isn't bijective in this case. Namely, it's not injective because injective says, so if we take a function at the point A, you could say, and it's equal to the function at the point B, this also implies that A is equal to B. But this is not the case because the exponential function, the complex exponential function evaluated at the point 2 pi is the same as the complex exponential function evaluated at the point zero. So those would be equal, but this wouldn't imply that 0 is equal to 2 pi. So that means our substitution wouldn't be injective in this case, not bijective. And that's why it wouldn't work. And after trying around a lot, I'm s sorry for this much talking. I was just going over to complex analysis residue theorem. We are going to do this next. <laughs> hey! Let's go. So I have to record this part again because Timo, the doctor professor whatsoever, came in as always. Never mind. So you see I said we are going to use the residue theorem now and for this I want to just take a look at this integral, ignoring the real part for now. And also for us to use the residue theorem, complex analysis, we need a complex valued function integrated over a certain contour in the complex plane. A simple closed curve. Okay, um, the good thing is we have already laid the groundwork before. You see, um, we have introduced the substitution and what does substitution actually said? And this is just for intuition purposes now. We are integrating from 1 to 1 this e to the z over i times z with respect to z. And you see we can just advance this fraction by i over i. That's just cosmetic stuff. Okay, coolio. And well, we got this now. So we want to make our f of z be equal to this argument right here, this integrand in this case. And we also need a certain contour to integrate over. And you see we have already laid the groundwork for that too. Because we are just going to use the unit circle for that, the closed one. So this is our contour and this is our outer arc of the circle gamma. That's our main tool. And the good thing is we are basically integrating from 1 to 1 now, which means we are not integrating over the singularity in 0. What is the singularity? Well, simply said it's just a point z where our function would explode to infinity, 0 in this case. And if we integrate from 1 to 1, no problem there. We are just ignoring the 0. And this is really good because we don't have to avoid the zero right here in the coordinate system, meaning we don't have to do a branch cut or something. We can just integrate easily. So this makes matters way easier. <laughs> okay, so let us introduce this complex function. Let f of z be equal to 
negative i e to the z over z. And like I just said, we have a singularity or a pole, not a role, a pole, at z being equal to zero. And it's a simple pole at that. And now we just have to find the residues. Because, you see, if we take the contour integral of this complex valued function, we just end up with 2 times pi times i times the sum of the residues of f of z. What are the residues exactly? Well, the residue z equals to 0 of f of z. Well, it's nothing but since it's a simple pole, we are getting rid of all this differential stuff. So we end up with the limit as z approaches 0 of z minus 0 times f of z, which is nothing but this right here. So negative i e to the z over z. z minus 0 is nothing but z, c, whatever you want to call it. So this and that is going to cancel out. Now we can safely take the limit as z approaches 0, resulting in negative i. Yeah, and this is basically our residue. So we end up with this thing right here, integrated, is nothing but 2 times pi times i times negative i. i times i is negative 1, negative 1 times negative 1 is positive 1. And, well, we are done. It's as easy as it is. So you see, this thing right here exactly evaluates to our integral we had in the beginning, 0 to 2 pi of e to the e to the i times x integrated with respect to x. So this is basically it. And to get back to our real question, <laughs> real question, we just have to take the real part of this thing. Well, if we take the real part of this contour right here, we just end up with, well, on this side right here, 2 pi is a real number. The imaginary part is 0, so the real part is just 2 pi. Being equal to the real part of this thing, 0 to 2 pi, e to the e to the i times x, dx. Yeah, and that's it. So, so we are done. The value of this integral is just 2 pi. Like I said, leave in the comments what you thought of my explanation before regarding this, um, yeah, not injective function. No bijection. <laughs> it's really hard to explain in English. I don't know. Um, not even in English. It's just really hard to explain because all those abstract things I have pushed aside a bit because I have other courses to do. Yeah. I thank you guys for watching. If you did enjoy this video, please like and subscribe and recommend the channel. If you want, support the channel on Patreon whatsoever or buy those stupid ass t-shirts I created. I don't wear today. Huh? I'm wearing this cool sporty pullover right here, sweater whatsoever. Yeah. And up until the next video, have a day. See ya.